This short video will help you plan a trouble-free Radiant installation with SmartTrack, your one-panel Radiant solution. It is not intended to replace the available installation instructions or the experience of a trained product installer. Please refer to the installation manual for further information and product warnings. SmartTrack panels offer a simple way to provide comfort of radiant heat without the added time and expense of concrete or gypcrete overlays. The lightweight, low-profile panels can be used in retrofit jobs where concrete is not an option. SmartTrack grooves are crafted to perfectly fit standard 3 8 inch Radiant PEX Plus or Radiant Pert tubing without any need for silicone. These Watts Radiant tubing products include a protective outer layer that helps ensure silent, trouble-free operation. For quality installation, begin with room-by-room -room heat loss calculations. This step ensures the system will provide enough heat on the coldest days of the year. A variety of software programs are available to make this task easier, including Radiant Works and LoopCAD from Watts Radiant. If you are not using software to assist with calculations, performance charts and related details are included in the manual. To prevent underheating, calculations should factor in the temperature limits and R values of construction and flooring materials. If necessary, supplementary heat can be added by installing smart track panels on the walls or ceilings. To simplify installation, create a drawing that details the tubing and panel layout. Ask your local Watts Radiant representative for assistance if you are not set up to create your own. SmartTrack is designed for use with 3 8 inch nominal PEX or PERT with an average outside diameter of 1 half inch. We do not recommend the use of PEX or PERT tubing with an exposed outer oxygen barrier layer, as this can lead to noise issues induced by contraction and expansion of the tubing. Both Radiant PEX Plus and Radiant PERT have a protective layer outside of the oxygen barrier and offer quiet operation with SmartTrack. 250 feet is the maximum length for loops in areas with high heat loss. 300 feet is the max for any other lower heat losses. Consider the pressure drop and flow rate when determining suitable loop lengths. The installation manual has a detailed pressure drop table for reference. SmartTrack single board solution simplifies material estimation. If you have a loop and panel layout, the quantity of panels will already be known. If not, simply divide the total installation area square footage by 4, and then add 2% for waste factor. Ensuring a sound substrate for the installation will save you time, money, and effort later on. It's difficult and costly to remedy moisture issues, squeaking, or unlevel floor surfaces once the finished flooring has been applied. Consider these questions early in the process. Does the substrate show signs of moisture issues such as mold, watermarks, or swelling? Is the surface level and free from high or low points? Can you hear creaking from the floor? Ensure that the building owners are given the chance to repair these issues before the radiant panels are installed. This video provides an overview of several installation methods, starting with the most common method of installation over a plywood subfloor. Start by placing boards that do not require cuts into position on the floor. This is where having a loop layout drawing will save you a tremendous amount of time. For installations without a layout diagram, start by placing full-size panels along the wall furthest from the room entrance or manifold. Ensure the layout provides the correct number of channels to accommodate the supply and return paths. Continue adding full-size panels, then cut boards as necessary to finish the layout. Furring strips can be cut for use around the edges of the room to fill in other areas that do not require pipe channels. 5 8 inch plywood, MDF, or offcuts from smart track panels can be used to fill these gaps. Allow for a 1 32nd inch gap between the cut ends, similar to the natural spacing of uncut boards. This provides room for expansion and contraction of the material. When cutting the boards, a circular table saw with a high tooth count carbide blade will provide a smoother finish. Rough cut blades are not recommended. Be sure to save offcuts, as these can often be used in other spaces. 8 inch cuts are recommended to get the most use from your panels. For room entrances and other complex areas, utility panels can be used. Alternately, a router with a half inch round nose bit can be used to add a channel where needed. This installation uses a hand router to accomplish near manifold piping. Before panels are glued down, it is critical that the tubing path is traced to confirm entry and exit points. Once these steps are complete, panels are attached to the subfloor using construction glue and screws, or cross stapling. Lift each panel up and apply a 1/8 inch bead of glue in a wave pattern to the bottom of the smart track panel. 
When placing additional panels, short lengths of tubing can be used to help ensure the channels line up before the glue is set. Once the panels are glued in place, use either 1 inch number 8 screws or 1.5 inch long 16 gauge staples in a cross stapled pattern to completely secure the boards to the subfloor. When cross stapling, sets of staples are placed close together at opposing 45 degree angles to the panel surface. Smart track can also be installed on walls and ceilings when additional capacity is required or when it is not practical to heat through the floor. For external walls, ensure that there is enough insulation in place behind the plywood to reduce heat loss. A layer of 3 8 inch plywood can be used to provide adequate surface for attaching the smart track panels. Wall installations are commonly limited to a lower section to reduce the chance of property owners puncturing tubing after the walls are finished. To prevent color changes in installations under drywall, supply water temperatures should not exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Smart track can also be installed over fully cured concrete with extra attention to moisture control. Newly poured concrete should have a minimum of 60 days curing time. The maximum acceptable reading with a calcium chloride test is 3 pounds of moisture emitted per 1,000 square feet over 4 hours. To reduce heat loss, under slab and perimeter insulation is recommended. In new construction, foam insulation is commonly installed under the concrete slab. For retrofit installations, materials such as dry core or barricade can act as a moisture barrier, thermal break, and insulator. A vapor barrier or water sealant over the concrete will help prevent groundwater damage to the smart track panels and flooring. Refer to the smart track manual for more details about over concrete installation. Once the smart track panels are in place, it's time to install the tubing. To ensure that the pipe can easily be placed into the channels, vacuum any debris out of the channels. Place the pipe on an uncoiler in an area that is out of the way of the loops that you are working on. Pull one end of the tubing towards the manifold location. When starting to place the tubing into the first circuit, leave an ample amount of tubing for the manifold connection. Lock the tubing into the grooves. A rubber mallet can be used if a section does not snap into place easily. Walk the length of the circuits to ensure all tubing is firmly in place. A water or air pressure test should be performed at the manifold to ensure there are no leaks before installing the finished floor. When it's time to install the finished floor, there are some common precautions to take for any flooring type, as well as specifics based on the floor material. Make sure that the flooring installers understand how to avoid puncturing the tubing. Some flooring types, such as traditional hardwood, require very gradual temperature changes to prevent cracking and warping. A maximum temperature is also a consideration with many flooring types. Thermostats that include floor temperature sensing and control features can be purchased through Watts Radiant Distributors. Traditional installation of solid hardwood can be done with some precautions. Is the wood dimensionally stable enough for installation over a radiant floor? Have you planned the loop layout so that the lengthwise runs of tubing can be perpendicular to the flooring? Is there control in place to ensure supply water temperature changes are gradual? When installing hardwood, nails should pass through the smart track panels into the subfloor. Read the additional precautions for direct installation of hardwood in the smart track manual. Engineered wood can be placed directly over smart track using a floating installation method. Do not fasten flooring strips to the smart track panels. This can cause cracking and buckling in the flooring when the components expand and contract. Tile and stone are ideal companions for radiant flooring with some care and installation. A cement backer board should be used to isolate the smart track panel from any moisture. In kitchens and bathrooms or any other area where surface water may be present, a water sealant layer is required. Where tile or stone is going to be thin set, an anti-fracture membrane is recommended to prevent cracking. Smart track can be installed over a wide range of flooring types. Refer to the manual for flooring specific installation details. Smart track radiant panels will last a lifetime in systems that are carefully designed and installed. Ensure the building owners understand the importance of not adding nails or screws to the floor surface without first determining the location of pipes. We hope that you can find this installation video useful and informative. For assistance with design, product selection, or installation support, please visit our website or contact your local Watts Radiant representative.